My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Throughout the past few days, there has been a lot of talk regarding Brett Kavanaugh and the accusations lodged against him by Christine Ford. One of the things that has really been enlightening, though, has been to see the way the whole dialogue and the presumption of innocence has changed. If you are a male and if you are accused of sexual misconduct of any type whatsoever, you now have, in the minds of the Democratic senators, the burden of proving the accusations against you never took place. You are assumed to be guilty until you can prove yourself innocent. The accusation itself is proof that somehow you are guilty. A woman can say, I am afraid, for whatever reason, for no reason, the woman can make up the reason, and that man is now judged guilty by society. Many of us have gone through the exact same thing in our family courts in Texas. And I can go give example after example when it has happened both to men and to women where a false accusation is met with as if it is verifiable truth even though all the evidence may be against the accusation. Particularly, this is true in a divorce hearing, especially if a, in a unilateral, no-fault divorce hearing, and in the state of Texas, where if a spouse files for unilateral, no-fault divorce, forced divorce against his spouse or her spouse, for any reason, for no reason, it can be a made-up reason, the judge in the state of Texas will always, always, 100%, without exception, rule on behalf of the person committing perjury, will always back the person making the false allegations, will always back the accuser, and the victim or the accused will always be deemed guilty. And it's very easy to prove this. In a divorce hearing in which there are two individuals, one person wants to get divorced and makes up claims, may be unsubstantiated, may be completely false, may be malicious the state of Texas will always, without exception, grant that person the divorce that either he or she wants. The spouse who is being forcefully divorced has absolutely no defense whatsoever. We need to come to grips with how poorly our legislation is written. So for example, in the Texas Family Code, section 6.001, it gives the spouse the ability to claim insupportability. Now insupportability is nowhere defined in the Texas Family Code. One person can say our marriage is insupportable. The other person can say, I don't think it's insupportable. I didn't even know there was a problem. And yet, even if the person making the allegation of insupportability is proven to be a liar, is proven to give false testimony, the state of Texas always, 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 without exception, 100% of the time, backs the plaintiff. How do we know that? because the divorce will always be granted. It is a legislative divorce that all one person has to do is just say, I feel our marriage is insupportable, no evidence necessary, this is an evidence-free accusation, that person wins. That person can even be the individual out committing adultery with various men or various women. That person may be a wife beater or a husband beater. That person may be causing all sorts of other damages and yet he or she gets to claim insupportability because my spouse does not like my behavior. My spouse thinks that my behavior is destructive. Therefore, he or she is guilty of insupportability. He or she is not supporting me in my behavior. And once again, the state of Texas always, 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 without exception, sides with the person, even if the person is at fault for the divorce. What happens to the innocent person? The innocent person will lose half of his or her assets at the very least. The innocent person may lose time with the children. In fact, in many instances, because the accuser is the first to file in Texas, the accuser always has the advantage when it comes to divorce court, and that person can set up something to make the other person look like he was a bad father or she was a bad mother and get the kids. Here is an innocent person, does not want a divorce, is being forcefully divorced, is having false accusations lodged against him or against her, and once again, the state of Texas always, without exception, 100% of the time, sides with the accuser. And that's very easily proven. All you have to do is show me three people in the entire state of Texas, and I believe there's about 80,000 divorces a year in the state of Texas that take place, 
just show me three divorces within the last five years in which the judge has said, no, I am not going to grant the divorce. It doesn't happen. And in fact, with the judges that I've talked with, they've said that they must grant a divorce, even if they know it is the wrong thing, even if they know it will destroy the family, even if they know it will destroy the children. The judges say, well, we have to grant the divorce because the legislature has passed this as a law. The, the judicial branch has absolutely no ability to say, uh-uh, this is not a legitimate course of action. It's not a remedy. In fact, you, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, who was filing for divorce, actually have committed the behavior that caused the marriage to be destroyed. No, I am not going to grant the divorce, or if I do, you will lose everything. That would be justice. Brett Kavanaugh is in a place right now, if he is innocent, how will he ever clear his name? And those who have been to the divorce court know exactly what that is like. When all of a sudden you get accused of being a wife beater, or you get accused of being a child beater, or in some instances where you get accused of being a child molester, and the judge will always take the side of the accuser and you will be found guilty. However, because it's not a criminal court, they're not going to really do anything uh, to punish you further, like put you in jail. They're just going to make sure that you don't get the kids. And furthermore, you will have to pay child support. And furthermore, if you can't pay child support because you're trying to figure out how do I preserve my good name, how do I live underneath this and keep my job and everything else, and you fall behind in child support, our Attorney General has the option of throwing you in jail. It is one of the as he calls it, one of the arrows in his arsenal of weapons that he can use against an innocent spouse. Now, he's not going to call the person an innocent spouse. That person will probably be called a deadbeat, either a deadbeat father or a deadbeat mother. A person who did not want a divorce, gets falsely accused, always loses. In the situation with Brett Kavanaugh, the Democratic senators right now are saying, Mr. Kavanaugh, we have found you guilty. There is nothing you can do in your power to restore your name, period. For the rest of your days, you will be considered a person who sexually molested a person, a person who, as they would say, was a participant in gang train rapes, or whatever they call it, a person who, by every single account of people who know him, say that he is an outstanding man with impeccable character who's not had any sexual complaints lodged against him, such as Cory Booker has, who, by the way, has alleged to groping, or such as Keith Ellison has, who, by the way, has been accused very credibly of domestic violence, such as Bill Clinton has, who, by the way, was accused of rape by Juanita Broderick, such as the former Senator Christopher Dodd, and the former Senator Ted Kennedy, who used to make waitress sandwiches. Nothing like this, but for the rest of his life, he's going to have to live under this cloud. Maybe he really did do this stuff. I'm sorry that public opinion has deteriorated to such an extent and that these senators have decided to target a man that they will destroy his character and his family for the sake of political gain. Thank you.